I, my name is Naima, and I will be talking to you today on imposter syndrome. I first want to begin, um, I know one of my, my colleagues here actually spoke and she said, Queen of Jers, I'm stealing that, don't feel embarrassed when you hear it. And I actually thought, you know, when I heard her say mentors, I was like, I keep hearing this men thing a lot in here. I'm just going to adapt with mentors and make it a thing. <laughs> so I'm a psychologist, I'm a mother, I am an NGO professional. However, today it's my honor also to be here as the newest chair, I'm like two days fresh, of the Caribbean Institute for Women in Leadership. So I noticed that Giselle was recruiting for the chamber and I am recruiting for Seawill. Thank you. So I'm here among my friends, my colleagues, my mentors. I see some former students in here uh, and my personal and professional acquaintances. And of course, all you beautiful and inspiring women who are participating today. Initiatives like this one are designed and implemented by and for women. A lot of the times we make plans for people, but they don't really apply to them. But you know that today everything that's being done is for you by women that have experienced a lot of the things that you've experienced. And it's so essential for these kinds of programs for the continued development of young women who, like all of us, need encouragement and deserve affirmation at every success. So some of you are looking around the room and you're imagining and wondering who this woman in front of or behind you is. <laughs> you see the names, you're like, who is this woman? Maybe you like her hair, her outfit, the way she speaks. You feel a little bit nervous, you know? But you might be thinking, I wish I was like her, or I wish I had her confidence. If only, if only, if only, right? But I bet you don't know that even as accomplished women, we can feel the same way. You know, we get in a room and we're smiling, but inside we're plagued with worry and self-doubt. As successful women as we are, sometimes we feel like we don't belong somewhere and somebody's gonna catch us out. Like, we're not as smart as we think we are and somebody's gonna catch us out, you know? But really, that's not true. Even when we work through our own nervousness at being mentors, you'll also be working through your nervousness as mentees. So quite frankly, most everyone in their life will at some, point, at some point feel like an imposter. It might be a position or a job that you feel you're not qualified for. It could be an achievement that you think you didn't work hard enough for. Or in my own personal experience, it might be difficulty taking a compliment. I really suck at it. <laughs> I would give credit to everybody before I would take credit for myself. But imposter syndrome is a real thing. Uh, as a psychologist, it's I can tell you, it's a pattern that makes people who suffer from it doubt themselves and their accomplishments. It can cause us to have a constant fear, as I said, of being exposed as a fraud or due to feeling that we didn't uh, deserve our achievements. Sometimes other people do it to us. You know, we've achieved something and they give it, they appoint it to somebody else. Oh, it's because she got that man. Oh, that girl, she's been so happy since she got that man. Oh, she got that job. You know, I don't know how she got that job, but we do know that we worked hard for those jobs. And sometimes we let the outside voices. I like to think of it in counseling as the thought bubbles. We have what we think about ourselves, and then we have what other people think about us. And often we let what other people think about us overpower how we see ourselves. So it can manifest sometimes outwardly, we have a lot of masking in society. We put on masks for who we think that people want us to be. But you know, sometimes you see someone, you're like, that's her, because you know, it's hard to hold up a mask. Sometimes your hand gets tired and people see who you are, but it's more important for us to be who we are. So that's essential. So sometimes it manifests outwardly through what we call masking, but mostly it manifests internally. And it can cause for us symptoms of depression, uh, symptoms of anxiety, and sometimes really low self-confidence, even on the outside though, if we look successful. But since I'll only be speaking today very briefly, I want us to talk about five personality types that are more likely to develop imposter syndrome. And I want to see if you can identify yourself in one of these. I know myself, so I know I'm in a lot of these. <laughs> okay, we've got the super person. These are people who tend to push themselves hard to prove that they are not imposters. They use success to not feel like an imposter and they get stressed out if they cannot achieve success. We can't always be successful. I had to learn a very important uh, life lesson that you're good, you can be good at a lot of things, but it doesn't mean that you have to do them all. 
But sometimes when we're the super person, we think we have to do everything. You're in the organization, you're the secretary, you're the president, you're the vice president, you're the, <laughs> you're the treasurer, you're the organizer, we're the super person. That also leads me to the next personality type, the go it alone person. People with this personality trait tend to try to do everything on their own. Sometimes it's because you can't count on others and you know the way that you wanna get it done. So you put your hand in everything. You just go it alone. They think often that asking for help is a sign of weakness and accepting defeat, especially if we work mostly among men. These people often think that if they do ask for help, then they're gonna be seen as a fraud. So that's the go it alone person. Then you have the genius. These people are used to taking things in stride. But if something pops up that's very difficult, they'll assume they're not good enough and can't complete it. I am like that with math. I can do a lot of things. I can read, I can do a lot of things. I was really good at English and write, but math, I don't know if there's a phobia for math, I think I have it. And I remember being in 10th grade and finishing 10th grade math and thinking, I'm not doing 11th grade math, only because I was an excellent student, but I wasn't excellent at math. So I was like, I don't wanna do that thing because <laughs> maybe I'm not so smart as I think I am because I'm not good at math, but we can't be good at everything. So that's the genius. We can be geniuses and not be that great at math. <laughs> then you have the expert. They want to know everything and they are not afraid to suggest their opinion or to take risks. That's your friend that reads everything and knows a little thing about everything that you speak about, right? These people don't usually put themselves forward for tasks that are not in their level of comfort because they don't want to look stupid. So if it's something that they've never done before, they're not in that because they only want to work on the things that they're experts at. And then my favorite, and I know we have a lot of them in here, and we call that the perfectionist. With this group, it's 100% or nothing at all. There could be one suggested amendment to a 200-page document that they completed, and they would take this as a failure, right? Somebody criticizes them about one aspect of their presentation and they're suddenly not accomplished. Imposter syndrome can have a particularly adverse effect on performance and so often we are actually getting in our own way. It can inhibit our productivity, it can seriously impact our career progression or even how successful we are just by worrying about the success we have. We can affect the success we are destined for. And so when I speak to you about these, it says, okay, now I know I'm an imposter, <laughs> which you're not. How do I beat that? Well, I'd like to tell you as a psychologist, what you're telling yourself is what we call a false narrative. And I like to use a method for addressing false narratives called the five C's. The first step is catch it. When you hear yourself telling yourself that lie, that story that I can't do it, I don't wanna try it, they're gonna know I'm not good, I want you to catch that lie. Because if you don't catch it, you can't control it. And the thought starts to spiral. So I'm not good at math. Maybe I'm not good at English. Maybe I'm not good at speaking to others. Maybe I'm not as successful as I can. Maybe I can't go to college. Maybe everybody at schools. It just spirals. So first you have to catch the thought. Then you have to control it before it starts to spiral. Okay, I've got that. Then you have to challenge it, right? So often we think we're not great at a lot of things, but where's the evidence? <laughs> so you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do that, but you've done it before. You've actually achieved it in a lot of settings. You know, I remember, I, I really think sometimes I wanna go back to get my PhD, and then I'm like, oh, but I hate research. I don't think I'll be good at getting my PhD. I don't know if I'll be good, I'll be able to finish that. I don't know, what if I start it and then I don't wanna finish it, you know? That's a real fear for me. But then I think, girl, you did your masters. You graduated with distinction from UE. <laughs> you don't have no problems at UE. You didn't struggle. It wasn't that hard. It wasn't even that challenging for you. You just worked a little harder and you got it done. So it reminds me like I'm telling myself a false story because if I just challenge myself to do something that I'm not particularly familiar with, that I myself know that I can stress, I can push myself to achieve it. So that's the challenge of it. We have to challenge these stories that we're telling ourselves. Then you have to change it. So once you challenge that story, start changing that narrative for yourself. So when you believe I can't do it, no. Listen to what Pat and Angelina told you today, I am enough. 
I did come into this space. I do belong here. Even if people in this room don't think I do, I know I belong here. And I have a contribution to make to this space. So I want you to challenge that and change that. And then last, something that we really are not very good at doing, women, congratulate yourself. Why do we never give each other credit? We don't give ourselves credit and we don't give each other credit. We just don't affirm each other to say, you know what, I see you, you look good. Sometimes it's a small thing like, girl, I love your hair. I know, I'm looking around the room, I see Sister Sensei in front of me, Michelle is always affirming me. <laughs> I feel so affirmed by her as a friend. I see a lot of friends in here, she say, you're doing such a great job. I think I'm just doing my job. You know, so we have to celebrate our successes, even if they're small, even if it's that you thought you were gonna fail the exam, even though there's no reason you never failed an exam before. And then when you pass the exam, you say, oh, I could have done better. No, I passed this exam and I did well. Let me celebrate that. I worked hard and I got it done. So that's important. So my last word to, is just to remind you, women tees and women tours, queenagers and teenagers, <laughs> that we have to regularly remind ourselves of our achievements and our recent wins so we can put our self-doubt into context and remember that we are not imposters. We deserve in every space that we are, we deserve to be there and we are enough. Thank you and really I look forward to this event today.